Welcome on Dromber's YouTube channel. This is the product review series. We're going to review the FRSky D4R2 receiver. I will show you how you can bind it, how you can set the failsafe, and I will review its basic parameters. Most probably, this is the most popular FRSky receiver you can buy right now on the market. Why? Because it's pretty lightweight, it's about 5 grams. It can provide 4 channels PWVM communication which means that you need as many wires as many channels you're going to use but on the top of that you can use this receiver as a 8 channel PPM receiver which means that you just need only one cable to uh, use uh, all 8 channels and you can feed it up to 10 volts and this is also capable to send the telemetry data back to your transmitter if you would like to use this receiver as a PPM receiver, you need to put the factory given jumper onto the third and fourth channel's signal pins, as you can see on the picture. In that case, the first channel will provide you the PPM signals. If you would like to use this receiver as a PWVM receiver, you do not need to do anything, just in that case you will have only four channels. This is a telemetry capable demote kind of receiver, so in that case you can just bind with the below FR Sky receivers which supports the demode like the FT, DGT and DHT series. One important thing I would like to highlight here. There are two official firmwares available for this receiver. One is the 18 millisec and the other is a 27 millisec version. The, most probably your receiver is delivered with the 18 millisec um, firmware version. And let me highlight here that it's basically can handle six PPM channels. So don't use more channels in that case. You have the chance to upgrade the firmware to have the 27 millisec uh, firmware on your receiver. In that case you can securely use all 8 PPM channels. To upgrade the firmware you need to have an FR Sky USB cable which you can see on the screen. Let me show you how you can bind this receiver with your transmitter. To bind the receiver you need to be sure that your transmitter is in the binding mode which means telemetry mode. You can set that to put this to two-way switches into off position as you can see here. So to put the transmitter into binding mode you need to hold this button while you switch on the transmitter and if you did that right the transmitter will be beeping which means that it is in binding mode. So let's first check the pinouts of this receiver. As you can see we will use the uh, first channel and as you can see here this means the signal, this is the positive and this is the negative. So it will be the signal pin, it will be the positive and it will be the negative. So be sure that you use that when correctly when you power it up. Uh, the only thing that you need to do is when you power this receiver up, you need to push this or hold this button. So let's do that. As you can see it was successful as the uh, red light is flashing. Let's check whether the receiver and the transmitter can communicate with each other. So first let me remove the power cover from the receiver, switch off the transmitter, switch on the transmitter again and power up the receiver. As you can see the green lamp is visible which means that the transmitter and the receiver can communicate with each other. Let me show you how you can set the failsafe. To set the failsafe before that you need to be sure that you completed a successful binding. So how you can set the failsafe is first switch on the transmitter, power up the receiver and now you can see the green light is visible which means that the transmitter and the receiver can communicate with each other Set the desired stick positions. Uh, I'm putting the throttle into zero right here. And just press the binding button for one sec only. You can see that it was one beep, which means that the failsafe is successfully set. 
You can also delete the failsafe settings, so if you do not need the failsafe function anymore, just rebind the receiver and failsafe settings will be deleted. Why failsafe is important to be set? When signal lost in a short period, the receiver continues to try to reach for the transmitter, but at the same time keeps the last command from the transmitter until a new command or a signal will be received which basically means that your aircraft continues flying so you may never see it again if it's not set. If you said that, in case of a signal loss, your receiver will act according to the stick positions which was actually set for the failsafe. For example, if you set the failsafe by put the throttle position to zero, it means in case of a signal lost, your aircraft will just fall down. Please subscribe, feel free to share these videos, and do not forget to raise your questions or comments. Thank you for watching.